just the two of us. <laughs> we can go. make it You're if not. we try, just the two of us. You and I. Oh. All right. Well, let's see. It's 301. We started out on this journey five minutes ago and we're just now going live. Isn't that something? Anyway, welcome to Money Moves Sunday. My name is Charlotte Donald. I am a basics educator here with Global Trading Army. Today, we're going to go over a outlook over, blah, go over the weekly outlook, Forex outlook, take a look at the news, take a look at a couple of the charts and help everybody to hopefully catch some pips this week just by making sure that you're doing both your technical and your um, and your sentimental and your fundamental analysis, three types of analysis that you learn here with Global Trading Army. So let's take a look at the news first and start off with tonight, actually, um, just in a few hours, about three hours or so, um, the Australian government is expecting a conversation on COVID-19 with their Reserve Bank of Australia, Governor Philip Lowe. Um, they're expecting some good news, hopefully. Uh, but of course, we've been hearing a lot of news coming out of the World Health Organization and CDC here in the United States. That's leading us to believe that we will continue to see, uh, continue to see uh, cases spike. And as cases spike, we might begin to start to see more volatility with currencies, especially as governments choose to either go back to shutting down um, shutting down things or 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 trying to do other measures we got a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of economies suffering as a result of lack of travel people are not able to travel as much as they want to we're not seeing as much international travel as we would normally see so a lot of uh, governments are experiencing especially like the australian government experiencing some uh really really not so great uh, uh, economic experiences. Uh, credit card spending year over year will come out uh, for a New Zealand dollar. So we'll take a look at AUD, NZD in just a few minutes, because those are two currencies that is a currency pair that is mo most likely to have a little bit of movement on uh, this evening. All right. On Monday, um, we have some yellow folders. Great British Pound has a couple of uh, store has a story. Euro USD um, expecting a little bit of, of news that might have a little uh, cause a little movement with Euro USD between uh, London session and New York session right here. So just keep that in mind tomorrow as you begin to trade um, at 10 a.m. The Canadian government uh, expects for the Bank of Canada, Governor Macklin to speak. Let's take a look really quickly and see what he's gonna be talking about. Again, they're gonna be talking about COVID-19. That's what everybody's talking about, COVID-19. All right, moving forward on Tuesday, the European Union has a little bit of news coming out. Uh, French flash services, PMI, and then uh, manufacturing PMI, German flash manufacturing PMI, the German flash services PMI. Expect that news during uh, London session, right at the beginning of London session, by the way, on Tuesday evening. And then uh, for the rest of the week, no more red folders, just a couple of yellow and orange folders. Really big news to keep in mind. Uh, on Thursday, we have uh, unemployment claims that come out of here in the U.S. Um, and then uh, GDP price in index. This is a yellow folder right here. You see this? It's a yellow folder. But I do expect that we might get some news coming out uh, from the Fed around that time. So something to keep in mind on Thursday, we might hear a press conference that is unexpected to come out because gross domestic product, as many people know, when we have three straight quarters of GDP being lower, um, that is when we officially call it a what? recession. Um, so uh, a lot of people are expecting, you know, we, we, we had the first quarter of the year actually looked good because we didn't, we didn't really experience any uh, shutdowns or lockdowns from the COVID-19 until mid-March. Um, so the first quarter of the year still looks good. But the second quarter, third and fourth quarter, um, Second quarter look bad. Third quarter we're in the middle of it. So there's expect there's some expectations here that we might see some not so good news coming out um, on this. So just something to keep in mind. It is a orange folder, but just something to keep in mind throughout the week. Unemployment claims, of course, still being what they are. I mean, we just got got some news last week. 
it's you know worse than what we expected but we can we we're looking at we're continuing to hear about jobs opening up something else to keep in mind this week is tomorrow wti crude oil and i got this through my broker wti crude oil um, contracts are expected to expire tomorrow so just something to keep in mind if you're trading any exotics like oil or if you're you know if you've been in any trades, any long-term trades on oil, we might expect some downward movement on that. We should expect a breakdown before a movement to the upside on that. All right. So the rest of the week is all expected yellow folders. And just so you also know, the rest of the month, we have no red folders on US dollar, just orange until we get down to um, until we get down to the beginning of July, which we will get the uh, non-farm payroll. So just something to keep in mind as we we stroll on through the rest of the month. Uh, there has been, and I've been looking at some of the pairs lately, there's been, you know, little movement when you when you're looking at the weekly uh, weekly chart. Let's take a quick look at GBP AUD. Uh, we can see right here it's finished off on a sell. Um, what we just noticed just a few minutes ago, GBP AUD has hit a level of, it has broken through a level of support that it had, it, it has hit before. This is back in September of 2019. But we look a little bit further back and we start to look at the July, uh, June, July area, we can see that prices are right back where they were. What I do expect is for this price to drag a little bit further down to this little area down here. This is our 200 day moving average right here. As we expect for price to come back down through this area, I don't expect for it to break too much further down the 200, but if it does, we can expect price to go from 179.39, where it is right now, to 176.377. We're just looking at that and realizing that's a 300 pip move. Now, of course, I'm looking at the weekly chart. So going down to the daily, you can still see we just, we just traveled right back where right it broke and then it came right back up. So we can expect right now for it to kind of move a little bit more. I think it's going to move sideways, even though we're expecting some AUD news today. I really think that we might see this begin to move up during that news conference this evening and then come back down. So just something to keep in mind, if price breaks above uh, 181 tonight, expect for prices to drop back down. I don't think it's going to go too far uh, back down. All right. Uh, what was I going to talk about AUD NZD before because I noticed that we have news coming from AUD NZD. So this one's a little bit strange too, right? Look at this. Going back to this time, uh, like this time last year, going back in this area, we can see prices right where it had been this time last year. Remember, what we're looking for is to see because our governments have kind of been playing around with, with, the, with the markets to try to help uh, stimulate economies across the globe, we might see something like some movement back into this area. So it, I expect for price to continue to come back down on AUD and ZD, um, but not, well, we'll see what happens this evening. Um, as pressure comes down, pressure goes down, and then we expect for it to kind of bounce back and play in this area. So we can expect possibly this week, all the way through June 20, uh, what, July 1st. So uh, from this week to the end of next week, and probably expect for prices to bounce up and then come back down to 105.80, okay? Now, here's another one everybody loves, EURUSD, yay. EURUSD is often a really great pair for beginners to kind of play with. I don't wanna look at that chart because that one is kind of jacked up, but I will actually point this out. If you're looking at EURUSD, um, again, price is above right now uh, the 200 day moving average, but it has broken down. So we've been looking at this for a while. We actually caught the move down here it broke below one level of support that it had created around the time that we um, started seeing uh, uh, shutdowns and lockdowns from various governments across the globe, especially in the European Union. So prices are continuing to come back down. I think the next move will be down to 1.11, this area right in here, before we see a price bounce back up to this level and come all the way back down. So down to 1.11, up to 12 and then all the way back down to 109. So we can expect to see it try to come back within this level here. Again, I'm looking at what did it do this time last year? Going down, look here, here's June. 
of last year, it came back down just in the same area that it did and broke down. It tried to come back up, but then it broke down behind below this level of support. So that's what I'm looking at uh, possibility for the rest of um, actually throughout the rest of this quarter before we expect to hear about any um, additional negative news on the um, on the US dollar or in, in other things as we continue to watch uh, COVID-19 hospitalization spike. Now, I'll, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna stay off of that. All right, let's talk about everybody's favorite pair to play with. Uh, everybody loves gold. Everybody loves gold, just like we love Raymond, right? Okay, so gold is on its way up. I believe it's continuing up. It closed out on a high at 1744.93 this past week. Um, however, it has some wicking to catch. You see this wick back here from May? It's also a, a previous price level that it's hit way, way, way back when. So I expect gold to come all the way back up to 1760, maybe the 1765 range before having a movement back down. It looks like it wants to be in this comfortable range right here between 1679 or 1670, uh, I'm sorry, 1680 to the 1760 range. So it's moving by about a thousand dollars ever so every quarter, um, I'm sorry, every few weeks, it moves it up just about every month because we see a movement this way. I was looking back at the can going back on the 20 day look watch this going back to 20 days look back at this weekly candle you see it's just been doing this since April it broke above uh, shortly after um, shortly after everybody saw this huge movement down with all investment instruments around the around the time that we, we heard about the coronavirus movement and how people were, governments were starting to shut down and then we saw prices go up while everything else like uh, the S&P 500 and 30 were going down. So prices started to go up and we've seen them traveling in this area for a good period of time. I think we can expect either prices to continue to break out of 1747 and go all the way up to 1800. I just don't know when that's going to happen. I do know that we've, we've seen it and we've heard it multiple times. There is a price target set for $2,000 on gold Maybe we might see that happen around November, depending on what the U.S. election, uh, presidential election comes out like. But right now, just expecting prices to kind of stay right in this area where we're between uh, 17, like I said, 1680 and 1760. So I do expect this candle right here, that when the weekly candle opens again, that it'll break above 1744.93, 1745, where it is right now, and continue some movement up till it hits 1760. And then at 1760, it'll break down just a little bit. Will that happen by the end of the week? I'm not sure. Um, but uh, let, me, let me put this, let me put this out and just see what we think. Maybe, maybe by June 29th, maybe by the end of the week. Keep in mind, we've had some weeks where gold has had a lot of movement, but very little volume. You can see that by looking at these candles here. So expecting prices to go up, but you may not see them move very quickly, especially considering what we just discussed right here at Forex Factory. There isn't a lot of, of red folders happening with the US dollar to the, through the end of the month. We do expect for prices to jump a little bit. So it might be a slow movement until we get to um, non-farm payroll, which would be on July 3rd. All right. I was looking at the Forex screener a little bit earlier just to see if I saw anything with any uh, recent movement. I did notice that CHF, JPY, which, was J, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, GP, this JPY, CHF, which is it backwards, um, we may expect a little bit of movement up from it. So let's take a quick look at it really quickly. All right, so it is on a movement down. Like I said before, the, 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 the converse pair is, is having movement up. So expecting for prices to come continue down. If we do not gap to the 20 uh, day moving average, which is 111.966 uh, or just 112 flat, um, we can expect uh, prices to break below this. So if it doesn't, if it, well, if it hits here, I believe it's going to break below and continue down. So once it hits this area, that's going to be a place where it's going to get into some indecision. It's going to say, hey, do I want to go below this this 20 day moving average or do I want to go back above it? I believe it's actually going to come back down again. I like to look at how does it look this time last year? 
moving back, looking back at 2019, we're right coming back right down into the range that it was this time last year. So we definitely are going to expect some movement back downward on CHF JPY. If you are looking at what could you possibly get into this week, I strongly recommend taking a, a look at that. JPY, where J, JPY pairs can be really funky, but there is, look on the 20-day, look at that. It's already broken the 20-day, so we can expect some continued movement. Once it hits this 200 level, though, that's where it's going to start to kind of go, hmm, should I move from 111 and break down or not? That is definitely going to be a movement back down to 110.5 at, at least. Now, will that happen this week? I don't think so. I think we'll see 111.5 this week, 110.5, maybe over the next two weeks or so. Just something to keep your eye on if you're looking for a pair on a swing trade. That is definitely a good one to get into because uh, usually the sprites aren't too bad on those. All right. I think I have some folks here in our chat room here. Happy Sunday, Jackie and Carol and Pastor Joseph. Happy Father's Day to you. Uh, you got tagged in the Facebook post, uh, Pastor Joseph. Um, <laughs> so as I was going live, uh, just want to check in with our uh, GTA members who are here. Do I have any requests for any pairs to be looked at this week? I know everybody always like, what's going on with nothing this? yet it's nothing yet I'm keeping my eye on keeping an eye on the chat um a lot of people are always asking about cryptocurrency definitely just want to take a quick look Bitcoin USD is in a selling moment right now it's below the 20 day moving average but it's still in this kind of like this area of consolidation once we see it break this level in here, I think uh, the uh, 9,000 9, level will definitely see that movement down that we've been expecting for a while, the 75. What will that break, great news story be that will cause it? I'm not sure, but I have been keeping a look right here. Um, if you're familiar with Forex Factory, you know that they also have a site called CryptoCraft. So I'm keep, kind of keeping uh, up with what's happening as we keep hearing more and more news about cryptocurrencies around the world. Um, there has been some more discussion about possibility of getting cryptocurrencies in um, uh, use for um, stimulating or stimulus payments to people in America. Uh, we've heard about Ethereum being used. So just something to keep in mind. You may want to keep an eye on this. The other big thing to keep an eye on is JP Morgan Chase's recent uh, news that were not very recent over the last quarter, they've talked about participating and creating crypto exchanges. They even went so far as to work with one of the major companies in the world, Coinbase. So something to keep in mind over, there is definitely a look this, this story right here, what did I just say? Technical analysis, it is at risk of falling below 9,000. It has hit a high level, which we can expect for people to um, see very soon. So if you're you're one of us that has to, you know, you have to, um, uh, if you're like me, we've got to we've got to fund our trading accounts with cryptocurrency. So we buy a little Bitcoin in order to do that. Just something to keep in mind. There hasn't been a whole lot of movement, but it has moved from 9,400 to 93 over the last week. So just keep an eye keep an eye on that as you're looking. What do we have here? Yeah, Charlotte, we have a few requests, please. So I think we can start with AJ for Jackie, please. Okay, yeah, we talked about AJ yesterday during our um, our class, and I, I want to probably just say, you know, right now we're expecting prices to continue down. I don't know how much further it'll get, but um, one of the areas that we're looking at is 70 as a place for it to break down. As you can see, again, I have this 20-day moving average and the 200-day moving average right here. So you can see already it's broken the 20 and it's coming down. I expect for price to come further than the 200, but I would watch it around 72. So probably this evening we might see a big movement. Again, we're expecting that news to come in just a few hours from the uh, Australian government. So I expect to see a little bit more push down there uh, over the next uh, 24 hours for price to just kind of come down uh, 73 to maybe 72. Looks like, um, you know, let's just draw a quick trend line and look here. Do, 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 do. Let's see what happens here. I like trend lines because they're also forecasting tools. So yeah, definitely sometime by, by the end of the month, prices should come down this way um, to about the 7,100 level. So definitely keep an eye on that as you're, as you're uh, trading. Definitely, we're, we're still in a, we're still in a sell here. And I saw one for U32, right? 
Yeah, U30, and we have Sebastian on Facebook that's looking for oil, WTI. Okay, I'm not going to attempt to try to do oil on this one. I will repeat again, oil is expecting a contract expiration tomorrow. I'm not playing with it. So I recommend if you want to drop some trend lines, we can do that. But I, I can't tell you whether or not I'm bearish or bullish on it at all. <laughs> that's just that's just real talk. Knowing what we've seen over the last couple of months with uh, with the expiration and also because I am here in Texas and seeing the how it has had an effect on people and people losing jobs and being furloughed, I do not expect oil to be a good, great commodity. What is concerning for me with, with price on it is that the volume and the price are not matching each other right now. And that's why I'm not messing with it. We're seeing prices go up. They're being forced up, but just like we see with the U30, we're seeing prices go up. They're being forced up, but that is not, um, it's not something that I'm playing with right now. I will see if we can get uh, maybe on Monday, see if we can get JROCK to publish a chart in our uh, in our public channel just to see what he has, if he has any thoughts on that one. Uh, I'm not going to play with it. <laughs> oh boy. All right. U30, I've been messing with U30 all week. Um, and I will tell you the, the biggest thing on U30, just to, just to go right here, one week count, one week chart. Look, look at this is like this is what was hurting me the other day. I did not do very well on Wednesday, um, but uh, well, actually on Thursday, Wednesday, I did great on on uh, on U30. But let me drop two horizontal lines here. I want to show you something really quickly. Do you see again? This is that volume thing, just like I was talking about with WTI. I don't expect a whole lot of movement with it right now because it hasn't been moving. Unless we hear some, again, surprise story coming out this week, especially after we hear about the um, unemployment claims later this week, I don't expect a whole lot of movement. This, a majority of our volume on, on U30 happened in just one day. And that was June 11th. And then going back here last week, June 15th, the price going up, but are we, should we expect for price to come all the way back here? That is what is uncertain. We're kind of having some weird sideways movement happening instead of just a movement. What we have seen a continuous movement up before. Look, here's the past, continuous movement up. It does look like it wants to play in this range where it has in the past in 2019. This was uh, in June, 2019, uh, we'll tell you guys this. The, the market experts that are out there, the, the people who go out and give you this great advice about what to do with your portfolios for your 401ks have been saying for the longest that the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average could not, could, could not maintain what it was doing. And we did have that small pullback that they were expecting in the May-June timeframe of last year. So we could see a price movement all the way back down here because it's hit this level of of support as it has done before, but it also hit that same level port of support on June 12th. So there is a possibility you may see it move back here or it might just start to play in this range again from 25.6 uh, to 26. What I am expecting is right now, just for, for now, I'm a little bearish on U30. So if I'm, if I'm looking for an opportunity for a buy or sell, I'm definitely looking for a sell because I'm looking at the, the, the chart 20 day down here. It's just crossing below this 20 day moving average. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, that's pretty, pretty consistent with what we expect with moving averages that we see price cut below the 20. So anything that I would take this week, I would continue to take sales. Um, so that's my sentiment. And then we said WTI crude. Let's look at it real quickly. Again, I'm not really confident on pricing right now because of this sideways movement that it's done. Also because of the fact that it's doing a uh, movement where, where <laughs> it's doing this thing where they're expecting prices, they're expecting this expiration tomorrow. Will we expect a drop like we did before? No, but I do think that the new prices are going to cause this to gap up at some point. And that's the part that I don't know is what are those new contracts for? Are they in this range, 39, 40, where they have been before back here? And there's still this uh, 
39, 40, going back up to, you know, the 40 to 55, but there's still that, uh, there's still a price war going on. And that's what's a little disconcerting and why I'm not playing with it. I can't say whether or not I'm bearish or bullish, but I can tell you, watch this. This is why I'm not playing with it. Do you see how we have all this volume here and now we see this wickish volume starting to happen where we used to have like these complete candles here. There very well may continue, be continued with price going up on the weekly, but we, we're still seeing this thing again where they're just starting to kind of eat each other up. Um, where we don't see any clear movement out, but we also see this movement in. So it could break above this area right here, uh, up above 40, or it could suddenly have a breakdown below 34. We're not sure. So just be kind of careful with it this week as you're looking at it. You may want to um, maybe set a couple of price alerts to see if it breaks above 40 and um, if it if it um, if it retests 40. So. Look for price to hit 40, look for price to retest 40. If it retests 40 and continues up, that's definitely a signal that it's buying. Um, the other thing to keep an eye on, again, going back to Forex Factory, um, you can, there is a, do, 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 do. the energy exchange here. So this is keeping, this keeps an eye on here. Uh, keep an eye on here. Not a lot of uh, great news coming out, but, um, but if you're keeping an eye on uh, oil, uh, we can expect to see what happens with, with any of the other things here. I don't see anything major coming out of any of these other places this week. But um, one thing that you can do, watch this, look for the whole week. Let's look for the rest of the month and see what happens here. Yeah, we got natural gas storage last week. That was it. Um, nothing really major coming out for the rest of the months, but just keep an eye on what is happening. Specifically, another another place to keep an eye on is um, any news that comes out of Saudi Arabia or Russia regarding oil. They don't usually show up on crypto, uh, I'm sorry, on the energy exchange, but there can be some great noise again, like here, narrowing trade range. In other words, they're not putting a whole lot, they're not doing a whole lot with volume right now because we've got ground, we've got airplanes grounded around the world. We've got, um, I mean, oh gosh, I can show you that video. I was <laughs> with a friend of mine. We were going to go pick up a rental car for her. And as we're driving through the airport, I live right next to uh, Grapevine, uh, I'm sorry, DFW International Airport right here in Grapevine. And you could just see American Airlines planes just grounded. Like we, we counted 12 of them. They're not moving. Um, as a matter of fact, you can go and, and look for a flight right now <laughs> For, for next week, and you're going to find prices lower than you would have found them this time last year, looking a month out. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. You can you can definitely um, continue to keep in mind, look at that. It, it, it's ranging and it's just not, there's not the volume behind it that we expect. So that is it on oil. Anything else? Yeah, we have one more. Um, if we can look at AUD USD, please. AUD USD. Again, we're expecting news out of the Australian dollar. Ooh, so look at that. Hmm, that looks like a struggle there. It looks like a struggle, a struggle, uh, <laughs> a struggle candle. We've broken um, this level of, well, let me draw this, watch this. Trend line going up. Watch this. Do, do, do. We got a trend line going up. It's already broken that that level here. Uh, in here, it hit below it. I expect for it to come back down further. Um, it's playing over the 20 day moving average. It's still above it, but I could guarantee you if I threw some Bollinger Bands on here, we would have seen that this is pierced out. So over the next couple of, that's the weekly. Let's look at the daily. Not the range. I want the day. What in the world did I just do here? There we go. Come on, back to days. Thank you. Forex Factory is so much fun. Yeah, definitely seeing price drop back down. Again, there's that 200 line right there. And look, the, 
<laughs> the trend line and the 20 are like right on each other if you look at that right there. So definitely if we see prices already breaking below the 20 day moving average, um, we can see, uh, I expect movement back down to the 200. Um, having looked at uh, the Australian dollar, it is playing around in this range where it is like playing, uh, it's, it's kind of playing a cat and mouse game. So Australian dollar, US dollar, I definitely expect some more weakness in the Australian dollar, mainly because they're not getting the tourism that they would expect. So hang in there if you were in a sell for AED USD. Um, definitely, if you're looking at any trades on Australian dollar USD this week, make sure that you are, especially if you're scalping like many of us do, you may want to consider a sell uh, rather than any buy movements. You're going to see that pressure going down on a sell. All righty. All right. Well, with that, let me double check the chat here. I can't see what's going on with Facebook. All right. Yeah, nothing. Um, everybody's saying thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank but you. there's nothing um, further on analyzing any further peers or indices at the moment. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for your time this wonderful Sunday afternoon. Again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Y'all have yourself a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of the day. Hey, I can see it's been raining all day here in Grapevine and the sun has just come out. So I'm going to go outside for a little bit and enjoy it. All right. Y'all have a great day. God bless you. Good day. Very nice. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.